What's up everybody? Today we're going to build this table saw outfeed table. Let's do it. Alright, I'm going to start out this project by saying I use scraps that I had laying around the shop. You could definitely use three quarter birch, whatever you want, MDF, whatever your favorite materials are. I actually used a bunch of pine with this project and they're old pieces that I ripped down from my living room that was actually used as molding before. What I'm doing here in this first handful of cuts is just really chopping off the edges, trying to clean everything up, making everything as square as possible and really getting them ready for our final dimensions once we get to that point. Once I get the pieces squared up, I'll hold it up to the outfeed side of my table saw to get a good measurement for how deep I really need it to be. And then I'll make a couple markings based on that. As we move on here, you'll see there's going to be about five parts to this. Three parts on the side that connect to the table saw and then another two parts that come off of the table itself. You'll see more about that as we move forward. Once I get all the fence pieces cut, I will start cutting materials for the legs. Now I didn't have any 2x2 two sitting around the shop, so I actually, once again, used scrap and glued a bunch of pieces together. You'll see this in the next step as I start to glue. Here's my leg pieces that I cut off. I'm just taking 2 inch strips, brushing in some glue, and then clamping them together for a while. Again, this would have been a lot easier if I had 2x2 two two sitting around the shop, but since I didn't, I used what I could, as this is only an outfeed table. Here's what my leg glue up looked like once I was finally done with them. Again, it would have been a lot easier to just use 2 by 2s Here's the hardware that I used. Please keep in mind it is based on my saw specifically, so you may end up needing to use something different. I grabbed fender washers, nylon lock nuts, as well as zinc plated hex bolts. My next move was to mark the space between the runner underneath the saw itself. That way I knew where I could drill for my hex bolts to go through. Once I knew that measurement, I was able to carry it on down along the support piece. Since this was a lot of scraps and probably not completely square, I took a little bit of extra time when making my marks to make sure things lined up as good as I needed them to. Once my line was scribed, I made marks at about every 4 inches. This will denote where I want to drill through for the hex bolts. Here I'm drilling through and note there's no need to countersink anything because everything will be attached from underneath the piece. There will be no issues. I did sand the piece lightly after drilling because there was some blowout on the underside since I didn't have it supported. Next I grabbed the bolts and the washers and prepared everything for installation. Next move was to slide the bolts into the railing and get them in rough position before we add our board. Our next move is to install the board. I'll take a washer and place it in between the rail and the board and put about four of them through. Once I get to that point, I'll hand tighten the lock nut on the end so it'll hold the board in place. Once I get that first one hand tightened, I'll install the rest of the bolts through the board. From there, I'll take my ratchet and start to tighten things down. Here's what it looks like underneath the board once I had everything tightened down. Once our support piece was installed, I could start installing the rest of the fence pieces. I started out by clamping the end piece down so that I could make a mark and knew where my glue area would be. I simply clamped it in place, grabbed a pen, made that mark, and then started to add some glue. Once the glue was in place, I reclamped that end bar in and made sure I had it flush with the outside of that support piece. After that, I drilled in from underneath this time countersinking, and then added some wood screws to hold things in permanently. One interesting thing I noticed while editing this video is that apparently drilling these countersink holes was really painful as uh, evident by my face. Okay, I know, bad joke. Let's get back to the build. Now, I don't often talk about specific tools I'm using in my builds. However, what you see me using here is a rigid palm impact driver. This thing is awesome. It's like 80 bucks right now. 
This thing is like having another hand. If you've never used one, I highly recommend you go check it out. After adding the rear support piece, the glue was finally dry on the legs so I was able to square them up. I took them over to the table saw, cut them to rough width, and then took them in the planer and got them down to final size. Next it was time to begin assembly on our actual tabletop. I once again temporarily attached a piece to the end with clamps, made my mark, and started to add some glue. Once I brushed that glue in, I was able to clamp the end piece back in, countersinking holes underneath, and doing final assembly, driving wood screws in from the top. Once again, take note in the apparent pain and suffering I must have been in while driving these screws. <laughs> Once the end piece was in place, I took my flush cut saw and just trimmed off the excess. Next, I grab a spacer piece the same size of the piece we used on the table saw support fence itself. This way I know where I can begin to mark to add my glue lines. I'll transfer those marks over to each side, use a large T-square, and carry them down. From there, I'll begin to add glue. Once the glue is in place, it's time to start final assembly on the underside of our table. I'll put the spacers back in place, making sure to clamp them down as well as against the end piece of the fence. This will ensure that everything is in good alignment. Once everything is clamped up and ready to roll, we flip the piece over and countersink some holes following the line that we made earlier. After our countersink holes are set up, we can drive wood screws in down to hold everything for final construction. Once everything is in place, we flip the piece over and once again use our flush saw to cut everything to size. Next, it's on to constructing our runners that we'll use to attach the legs together as well as to the underside of the tabletop itself. I trimmed the runners to final size at the table saw based on the dimensions that I needed. I will be using glue and pocket hole joinery to hold everything together. I added four pocket holes on the bottom runner and two pocket holes on the top runner on each side. Next, we squared our legs on the table saw once again based on the dimensions that we need for our build. From here, it's on to final assembly of our runners and table legs. Please note I did use spacers when installing the top runner and bottom runner alike. I needed to find the center of my legs in order to know where to drill for the adjustable feet that I bought. I drew an X, which gave me my point, and then grabbed a brad bit with a flag on it so that I knew where to stop. From there, I tapped in the insert and I was able to screw in the actual feet that I got. With the legs and runners assembled, it was time to attach them to the bottom of the table. You can see I added a spacer here and clamped it in place so that I was able to slide the leg assembly over and that it would be even on both sides. From here, I added my piano hinge, first screwing it into the leg assembly itself and then screwing it down to the table. and ended up working really nicely. Once the leg assembly was complete, I flipped the table over and added it to our saw. I made sure there was plenty of room to slide our table saw fence back and forth as needed and I grabbed a cut off from the legs and made sure that everything was even before moving on to the final routing step. What just happened? Let's slow that sucker down and watch it again. Let's take a look at how this happened. You see, I was very careful when laying out the screws on top of the table, but not as much when I screwed in the piano hinge from underneath. There was a screw partially sticking out right here that I caught while routing the track extensions. Please be sure to check your layout and remove any screws potentially in the way prior to routing, unlike me. Here's our final outfeed table assembled and installed on the saw.
I made this table based on the specifications of my saw, and this is a build that definitely proved to be more challenging than I originally thought it would. That being said, I hope both the successes as well as the mistakes that I made during this build will provide you with some additional information that will be helpful in your own build. As always, thank you for checking out this video, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll be sure to get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do that as well. You can see more of my work at KenCarano.com, and I'll check you guys next time. Yeah.